Hello everybody, we're gonna start our painting skills packet. Um, the first page, page number one, has six different types of paint that you're gonna experiment with. So your job in each of these squares is to just first draw a simple picture. I just drew a heart, so I'm going to then um, practice painting inside and outside of the heart in different ways. So my first type of paint here says watercolor cake. So watercolor cake you will find in the painting center looks like this. It's like a little ice cube tray and it has little tiny what we call cakes of watercolor paint. Watercolor is not awake until you add water to it and you have to always keep your cakes in the tray. They should never come out. So I'm gonna grab my watercolor cakes and then I'm going to set up my tray. My tray should have three things, a water cup, a sponge, and a couple different sizes of brushes. I have a big, medium, and small. And then I'm gonna put my paint on the tray. So my tray should be set up like this, and I will switch out my paint every time I'm ready to get a new type of paint. So for watercolor cakes, my goal here is to make sure I add water to the watercolor cake when I want to use it, and I'm gonna paint my picture. So I'm gonna start with my medium brush. I'm gonna dip in my water and then dip in whatever color I wanna use. So I think I'm gonna use red first. So I'll dip in this red here. Now the trick of watercolor paint is you do not wanna jam your brush in very hard. You just wanna tap lightly. If you jam your brush in too hard, then your brush will stick to the cake and it will come out. That's not what we want. We just wanna lightly tap. And then I'm going to use that paint to paint in my picture. Watercolor paint is very light, it's very see-through. You should see your paper underneath your color. If you want your watercolor to be darker, you can add more color without adding more water. See, I'm just dipping in my color. I'm not adding any more water. There's enough water in it. And then I'm just painting the picture. Um, wash your brush in between colors. So I'm gonna dip, 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 dry and then get a little bit of clean water on my brush and dip in a new color. So for the background, I think I'll use blue. So I'm just gonna lightly tap, tap, tap in the watercolor paint and paint my background blue. Now the thing about watercolor paint is it's so wet and liquidy that if you are painting one color next to another color, If you are painting one color next to another color and they're both very wet still and you haven't let the first color dry yet, they might bleed into each other. That means they're going to kind of mix a little bit. So if you don't want that effect, what you can do is wait for the red to dry before you go in with the blue. Sometimes if you want your watercolor paint to dry faster, you can always get like a Kleenex and kind of dab some of the water off. I'm done with my watercolor paint. Actually, I'm gonna cover that up a little bit more. There we go. Wash my brush off. Okay, now it's time to go to tempera cake. So I'm actually gonna take this off my tray, put it back in the painting center, and I'm gonna grab this tray. It's very large, it's not gonna fit on your big tray probably, so I would probably just put it next to your painting tray like this. Now, tempera cake is very much like watercolor paint. It's not awake until you add water to it. So I'm gonna use my big thick brush for this one. Swish in my temper cake a few times. This one, it's okay if you're a little bit rough. It's not as sticky and fragile as watercolor paint. So it's kind of like regular temper paint, but it's in just like a dry cake form. It's not liquidy yet. Okay, so it's a little bit more solid than watercolor paint, not as see-through. Wash your brush in between colors. It might take you a few swishes before you can get the paint going, that's okay. And then paint your picture. Tempera cake is more see-through than regular tempera, but it's not as see-through as watercolor paint. Okay, wash my brush off. Time to go now into liquid watercolor paint. So I'm gonna grab this one from the art center. It says liquid watercolor, and I'm gonna put it on my tray. Be very careful when you're opening this lid because liquid watercolor is so liquidy that it might splash a little bit when you open it, so be careful. All right, it's really important that we keep these colors clean and wash our brush in between. So I'm gonna actually use my skinny brush for this one. 
And sometimes it's hard to tell what the colors are. If you're not sure what the color is, you can just dip and then kind of do a little experiment on the side of your paper and you'll find out what the color is. So I know this one now is red. So liquid watercolor is just like watercolor cake, except it's a bit more pigmented. And what that means is you can get much brighter colors out of it, not as light as regular watercolor paint. Okay, wash my brush. I'm gonna go switch to my medium one now. And I wanna use blue. Let's see if this one is blue. Let's test it. That's purple. That's fine, I'll use purple. Paint the background purple. Now, the other thing about liquid watercolor is it's already awake. See how liquidy it is? You don't have to add any more water to it. In fact, if you add more water to it, it's just gonna water it down. It's not gonna make your colors as dark. So don't add any more water to your tray here. Now, if you ever wanna mix colors with liquid watercolor paint, you could get a mixing tray and your mixing tray looks kind of like this. It's like a sheet of plastic. And you can mix colors on here, different types of colors but please don't mix these up. These should stay nice and fresh in here. They should never get mixed. Okay, I'm done with that. I'm gonna go get my regular tempera now. So this is regular tempera paint. It's already awake, it's liquidy. It doesn't need any water. So I'm gonna get my medium brush, dry it off really good. I don't wanna add any extra water to this because we don't wanna get it too watery. Dip in my color. Now, when I use temper paint, I don't wanna dunk my brush. See how my paint did not go all the way to the shiny part? The shiny part is kind of where my hand, my fingers are supposed to go like a pencil. So just keep your paint on the tip and you're painting as if you're holding your brush like a pencil. And I like to outline my shape and then go in on the inside like that. Okay, temper paint is really important to wash brushes. So I wash and then I really make sure I scrub and dry my brush on my sponge and I test my brush on my hand to make sure there's no more paint. And if I'm good, then I can go and get my other color. Now, temper paint is a type of paint that mixes really well. You can mix colors. Um, so if you wanted to create a color that you do not have in here, for example, I don't have any purple, I could get a mixing plate in the paint center and I could mix up some colors. Let me show you how to do that. So this is a paint palette, it's a mixing plate. So if I ever wanted to mix up a color like purple, I would take a scoop, put it onto my plate, wash my brush and dry it really good. And since blue is so dark, I'm gonna wash it two or three times, test it, pretty good. Then I can take another scoop and mix and I can create new colors. So that's kind of a nice purpley color that I could use if I wanted to paint my background. Maybe I wanna do like a color fade from blue to purple. Ooh, I kind of like that. All right, looks like I'm done with tempera. I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna close the top. And now I'm gonna grab the next one which says paint marker. So paint markers, you don't need any brushes or water. You just need the actual marker itself. Paint markers um, are kind of an interesting tool because unlike a regular marker, it doesn't automatically work right away. You might have to press the tip of the marker a few times to get it going. You're also here, it has kind of like a shaking sound in there. If you shake it up, it kind of shakes the paint up. Um, so I'm actually going to press this marker down until I start to see blue paint coming to the tip. So the more I press it, the more paint will come out. And you can kind of see the paint is starting to come out there on the tip because I've been pressing it. And you can see now it's starting to come out onto my paper. Okay, so now the marker is ready to go. The tip is totally blue, so it's ready to be um, colored with. So then when you color with it, it's kind of just like a regular marker, but the harder I press the tip, the more paint is gonna glob out. So I don't wanna continually press the tip and keep pressing the tip um, because see that paint will glob out very fast if I keep pressing the tip. If I need more paint, sure, I can press the tip, but I don't wanna keep my tip pressed for too long the paint will glob out, okay? Um, I'm not gonna paint the background of this one because this marker is not ready to go yet, but you get the idea. You can then get that marker ready to go and paint the background. All right, the last one says marker and water. 
So this is kind of a unique technique. You're just gonna grab regular markers. What you're gonna do with these regular markers is you're just gonna kind of color your picture. It doesn't have to be very neat because what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take water and a paintbrush to smooth out this color. And I'm actually gonna put some purple in the background to kind of show you how the colors can mix. So now I'm gonna take my big brush and just a clean cup of water. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to just put the water onto the marker. And you'll see that when I do that, the marker starts to spread, the marker color, and it kind of smooths out the color. The more marker I have down here, the more the marker will spread and smooth out like paint. Um, so if you wanna get a really um, smooth, marker um, color, put more marker down. Use a marker that's really juicy. These were kind of a little bit dry. Um, but yeah, try a really juicy marker. Okay, um, I'm done with this page. I'm going to put my name on it. And because I have a lot of wet areas still, I'm gonna put this on the drying rack. Um, that is it for page one. Now, when you finish page one, go to Google Classroom and watch the video for page two.